In 1990, when Cameroon's president, Paul Bia, launched the Freedom of Mass Communication and Freedom of Association, many Cameroonians were happy that a new dawn has arrived in Cameroon. And during that period, there was the formation of political parties and individuals were given the privilege or right to own private broadcast media. At the same time, we were given the privilege to have freedom of speech, freedom of expression, and freedom of association. And in 1996, there was an effective decentralization law that was passed into place by the Commons Parliament, in which it mandated the Commons Parliament, uh, the, the state authorities, to implement effective decentralization. But the decentralization was in a snail pace and moving in a tortoise way of working, and we are still facing the effect today. And because of the slow pace of the effective decentralization, we witnessed a crisis in the north and southwest region, which erupted in, nine, in 2016 with the teachers and the lawyers, and metamorphosed into a full-blown armed conflict in early 2018, during which we started hearing the sounds of guns around north and southwest region in all the nooks and crannies, and Kwakwa became a center of abstraction in which it was raining bullet in Kwakwa. As far as that is concerned, Cameroon's government, uh, Cameroon government has put in measures, effective measures, to ensure that it tackle this crisis according to the government machinery. The government also have actually articulated that they are struggling to ensure that Anglophone have accelerated decentralization with a special status which has been accorded to them following the September 2019 Grand Measure National Dialogue, which took place in which we were told that a special status had been accorded to to the north and southwest region. In all of this, we are still witnessing how the nation is ongoing with this war within the north and southwest region. Minister Paul Atanganji, Cameroon's Minister of Territorial Administration, was in Bamenda two weeks ago and articulated that the Cameroon's government has actually won the war against the separatists. Minister Paul Atanganji said the government has won the war and that only a handful of pocket resistances are those fighting. And he urged the voices in the bushes to lift up their arms and to come up and meet those who are already at the DDR center. According to that, Minister Paul Atanganji also articulated that all measures have been put in place to welcome those who have dropped their arms to ensure that come on move on effectively and peacefully. National identity card issue is equally another center of discussion on today's edition of our program with passport difficult to come by most of us are still to procure our id card some of us the system of getting this id card is like an elephant to pass through the eye of a needle this is house of commons with me tamai javis Happy Sunday to all those of you who are joining us on House of Commons. It is a special 31st January 2021. Finally, January is going out and we are welcoming February on Monday within a new day. To discuss on today's topic, we are looking at two topics today. We are looking at Mr. Paul Atanganji's victory and Ayabacho Lucas blaming the Anglophone non-state armed groups, stating that they are committing acts against humanity, crimes against humanity, and they are equally uh, kidnapping people based on what he termed uh, Turks, according to Ayabacho's own words, who is one of the frontline leaders of the Anglophone movement who happens to be the boss of the ADF with Ayabacho Ebenezer Kanga blaming the Anglophone separatist movement. Is it that Mr. Paul Atanganji's declaration of victory was correct after all? Mr. Ignatius, uh, Te uh, Fondu Ignatius Tebek, welcome and thanks for joining us. Thank you, Javis. Uh, good afternoon. And uh, I wish to uh, say congratulations to Cameroon and uh, the population of Douala as uh, they are celebrating the victory of the Lions yeah. uh, yesterday. Equally, I will, for the first time, I will join others to send my heartfelt condolences, uh, condolences to the bereaved families uh, concerning what happened in uh, the West region. In the West region in Chang, even that of is uh, in towards Bafia, we should pray. That 2021 should not be like 2020 because we thought that 2020 was a very bad year and we thought that we were coming out of that type of uh, ill luck. 
but we see 2021 almost becoming the same thing. We should pray strongly so that God should uh, save us and save Cameroonians from this type of uh, situation. Okay. So thank you very much. Ba Akwen is here with us. He, she is a political analyst. Ba Akwen, thanks for joining us. A privilege to have you and a happy Sunday to you. Thank you, Mr. Javis. Good morning or good afternoon to my co-panelists. I want to send a special greetings to all Cameroonians and all the televiewers of my media prime and House of Common. I also want to congratulate uh, the victory of um, the Cameroonian team over the Congolese team yesterday to uh, two goal to one. But really what caught my attention or what drafted my attention was to the fact that the COVID-19 test run on these um, Congolese players previously um, proved that 13 of the Congolese players were infected by the coronavirus. And later, a team from the CAF came and did a control fact, then came and did and ran another test on these um, Congolese players. That later proved that just three were infected. Now, the question is, what really... Uh, calls my attention is that is it that the first result that came out was a way to mentally disqualify um, the Congolese team before the game began or is it that um, the strips they used for the test was not really appropriate or were not really good or was at fault and two uh, I might also say that the CAF team that came and did the second test on these Congolese players were they under pressure were they under pressure or they just wanted to, you know, um, um, uh, favor the team of the Congolese that mounted pressure on them, both in Cameroon and out of Cameroon? So I really want to, you know, want those that have the ability to educate us more on the issue of the tests that were run on these um, Congolese players to tell us what really happened. Because if, if, it, if, if really the tests that were run previously were true, it means that the lives of so many Cameroonians and Congolese and other supporters at the field were really put at risk. Okay. It is a question that needs an answer urgently. Um, thank you very much for that insight. Uh, and subsequently, on other editions, we will look at that. I think it's time good enough for us to move into the cocks of the matter on today's edition while waiting on other members of the panel to join us. i begin with you, uh, Mr. Ignatius uh, Tebek. Uh, we, we, when we look at a cross, um, look, when we take a cross look at the Anglophone crisis, uh, from when it all started till now, uh, the, the, the graph is gradually of hostility is moving down and Minister Paul Tanganji uh, in one of his visits in the northwest region articulated that the BS led government, uh, the Cameroon government, has won the war against the separatists. And of recent we saw Ayabacho Lucas and Ebenza Kanga blaming the boys for committing crimes against humanity and indicating that they have done a lot of crimes and that is why maybe the struggling the struggle is struggling struggling to fail uh what can you make of all these happenings as far as is can this is concerned could it be that the war has been won according to mr paul atanganji's word you know javis uh we all know the our minister you know is uh we have been seeing all his outings he is used to talking like that but as a minister to say something as a minister, he, he does not just say it like that. He has a reason behind. He, as a minister, before the declaration, there are things that he count on it, before declaring that the, the government has won. Uh, even I have not spoken with him direct, but from my own see, I believe that, uh, according to him, the victory is, one of the factors is that the government has been able to station uh, the, the military in the anglophone zone for four years today. That is one of the things that I see. And then uh, I want to look again on the other side. I can also declare the other side, their own victory is that they have been able to, to, to command the gold stand for four years today. I begin to see things like uh, a power sharing. I'm beginning to suspect these two groups, I'm beginning to suspect them, they, they meet. Because really, uh, we, we are seeing the way things are going. Shooting is taking, continuing taking place. Civilians are being killed. 
soldiers are also being killed. Children are not going to school. In short, the activities, economic activities are not moving well. People are really in pain. I don't yet see any victory on the side of the government nor the side of the separatists. As for the minister, he is very used to making declarations like this. But what I would like to say is that the they don't take consideration into the, they, they don't consider the population they don't put the population at the first place before making such a declaration because the people feeling the pain uh, uh, the, is the population that's the what that's what I, I see with the minister on the side of the declaration of uh ayabacho i see it coming in his his intervention is coming in very late these are things that they were supposed to if really they know that they, they, they were fighting a genuine uh, fight, we have seen chaos on the field for, for, for quite a long time. You see, there are groups that they are sponsoring. Sometimes we even turn against the, the, the other group to the extent that you cannot more identify which group is which one. That is how some of the groups have even been transformed into armed robbers that they, they they attack even some financial institutions and carry money away. All those things, we cannot blame another person but the people who are commanding the, the, the fighters uh, on the field. I thought that they were not seeing. Because really, uh, if you claim, if you believe that you are fighting for a people, and then you tend to torture the people the way we are seeing, it, sometimes it, it gives you curse. According to Ayabacho, he one of the reasons that he's reacting like this, maybe he is trying to say that they have not been able to win the war for four years because of the, uh, the, the mal practices of the, the fighters on the field. But according to me, that thing is a curse. It is the, 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 the pain that has been uh, 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 put on the population. You know, uh, the innocent people, the only weapon that they have is prayers. Okay. Yeah, when they pray, they curse you, and when they curse you, you will not succeed the mission that you are you are out for. According to me, I consider that really they should begin to understand that the way they handle it, the population is cursing them from behind. I witnessed a situation in my village where a classmate of mine died, and they 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 they, they, they carry the corpse to the village. The family is in pain. The corpse was lying in front of the the the, the, the compound. And these boys came and arrested up to about 10 people who came from the town to, to bury uh, the, 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 that, that man. What happened? All mothers rallied themselves, <coughs> went behind, and naked themselves, and were covered their, their heads and naked themselves, and were dancing in front of uh, the, those boys. And then I, I realized something that something was wrong. Uh, Javis, if you are from the Northwest, you know what it means by a, an old mother is standing in front of you naked. That is a type of curse which I don't really know. Any man that sees that is supposed to run away. But I realized that those boys, while the old mothers were dancing and cursing them, they stood and were looking at them. That is to, to tell you that that group, they are, they, some of them do, do not even know what they are doing. And they don't even know, they, they, even the pain that they are putting on the population, they do not even understand that it is pain. And because really, somebody who does not fear his own life will quickly take your life away without uh, having uh, that hu human feeling. They were cursed until uh, somebody had to tell them that what, what has taken place there, it means that all of you are finished. And I'm also seeing it on both sides on both sides. Really, when you may save a, a soldier, you know that a soldier has a, ta a target. A soldier is to fight war, and to fight war you have a target. Okay. But if you derail from whom, from the person you are supposed to fight, and you begin to fight armless people, you are cursed. Do you know the way fighters are cursed? You are cursed in a way that any time you go on war front, you will be, you will be the, at least the first person to be killed. So I am already seeing that one on both sides. Even, okay. so, yes, even soldiers who commit uh, atrocities and they, they, I'm seeing them these people who fall like that are those people who do not uh, go in for what they are Thank instructed you. to do but um, uh, let me come to you you are a member of um, the PCRN and you are someone too who is vast with the happenings in northern southwest region uh, when we look at Minister Paul Atanganji's outing that 
Cameroon government has won the war. On the other hand, immediately, I uh, think three days after Tangenji's outing, Ayabacho Lukans and Ebenezer Kangwa equally coming out condemning the armed separatists, their own fighters, that they are Turks, they are this, they are that, they are that. Um, what can you make of this situation? Does it mean that Cameroon government has won this war? Um, Mr. Javis, um, you know, in the beginning of this crisis, um, it was, um, there was, there, there were so many things that the Anglophone, the Anglophones were demanding from the, the government, actually. And we saw that one of the reasons were, were that the Anglophones were being assimilated. They also, um, complained of the language of English language being a second class language in Cameroon. And we also noticed of, um, the fight between the common law and the civil law, um, system of, uh, of government. So we saw that in the beginning, their their plights were really valuable their plights were they were they, they had some they were liable if I can say but now we can notice that with the rampant killings the kidnaps and uh, most of the hate speech we have um, on social media you will notice that the the reasons for for which this um, crisis started is not really the same now. And with the declarations of Atanga G, um, this um, government official, he's, um, he's one of the reasons why um, the Anglophone crisis came to an explosion. Because um, previously he went to Bamenda when uh, the Anglophones started the problems, when they were demanding some number of things from the, the, the government. He went and he said that um, the Anglophones have no problems, that the Anglophones are just, you know, they are just being agitated. And this gave like a wildfire. Uh, it was a provocative speech. And later, recently, um, he still visited Baminda and he said, the boys, the boys, as the, the, the regular statement, he says, the boys is in the bushes. It has become like, you know, um, um, how can I quote this? A word that people use nowadays to like a mockery. You know, he went there and said that the government is winning the war against um, the Amazonians or the separatist fighters. You know, um, firstly, I would tell you that a government can never win a war against its own people because you know um, the government is like the father of Cameroon and you cannot be fighting your own children when children complain you bring them together you sit with them and you ask for their plight and you try to find solutions we are going to notice that the government of Cameroon is not that kind of a fatherly person that really understands the the, the plights or that really want to you know solve the problems of the anglophones so we have of these um this very prominent um uh, government official Tananji who is so agitated and always to me I, I call him uh, the problem Cameroon has because he is always bringing out some kind of provocative speech that we Cameroonians do not need at this moment because Cameroonians need speeches that will better calm our hearts speeches that will bring us together as one person to look for the problems that is disturbing Cameroon now we are going to notice that Ayabacho was one of the the, yeah, the men Behind Before the you continue, how do you call um, a government official, a senior minister, Cameroon's Minister of Territorial Administration, who has been working hard to ensure that this crisis comes to an end in terms of visiting the conflict areas, visiting the military, giving humanitarian support, mattress, bucket, rice, and talking to the people, begging the boys to drop their arms, that he is a problem that Cameroon has. What do you mean by the problem Cameroon has? Is that not an overstatement for a minister who is working hard for peace to reign in Cameroon? Mr. Javis, you know, when we will start telling ourselves the truth, that is when Cameroon will be liberated. You know, Atangonji is one of the problems Cameroon has at this moment. Because without the, the words of Atangonji, it wouldn't have boiled to the anger of the Anglophones. He was the one that went to Bamenda and said the Anglophones have no problems. He is still the same person that insulted the the, the Western the, the chiefs from the West regions as telling them that they should go back to the farms. So he's always a con he's contradicting himself. You noticed when um, the Grand National Dialogue, when the Prime Minister, the person I respect so much, he's a man of integrity and respect, John Gute. When he said that, we are going to talk of the form of the state. He said, we well, can discuss everything except the form of the state. Who is he? Is he greater than our prime minister? That's the question. He has become like um, 
a means of public disorder to me. But is, is it not just logical for a minister to encourage chiefs to pick up agriculture as another sustainable way of sustaining their community? Mr. Javis, you know, um, on the 6th of December, we had an election called the regional elections. And who covet the electoral college? Mr. President. It is his president. And he brought out a decree. It means if Atanamji is saying the chief should go back to the farms, it means he's insulting or he's not respecting the decree of his president. Because you will notice with me that the traditional chiefs took part in these elections. It means they are already politicians. They are into politics and they created the house of chiefs. So you cannot be telling me that you are with the government and you are contradicting the words of your own government it means you do not know what you're doing you're just being agitated you just find it pleasant to go out and say whatever comes to your mind so i will tell you that atanganji is one of the problems we have going back to ayaba cho who is the adf chairman with Ebenezer akangwa you know these guys in the beginning the these guys are educated people they are literate and I previously said on this platform that the boys who are in the bushes are ignorant. When I talk of ignorance, it means what? They do not even know why they are fighting. They do not know why they carry arms. Most of them are just being um, over emotional to the fact that they lost one member of their family or let's just say all or most of them who were in the universities could no longer go to school they decided with their different reasons to join the ambazonians in the bushes which to me they really do not know the pivot to which why these crises are ongoing so these ayabacho and the uh, ebenezer kangwa who are the men behind the mask who um who, who were the ones who um are like the brains to these anglophone crises and after the speech of um, um, uh, Atanganji, they found it um, necessary to come back to reasons because at every point we are all humans. We are humans and I think that it's that humanly feeling in them that made them to come back to the fact that you cannot tell us that you are fighting for a people which you are killing. You cannot tell us that you are fighting for a people you deprive of education. Meanwhile, their own kids are going to school. Their own kids receive education. They are living under good conditions. Yet, they deprive those they say they are fighting for not having all these facilities. But, um, Mr. Jarvis, I will tell you that it's a political strategy because this is a political fight. It is a political battle between the government and the secessionists and their leaders. So I think it is a political strategy that I cannot give a 100% um, uh, consent to his outing because it could still be that it is another window dressing because if normally he was supposed to denounce these guys, it is not today. We have had killings. We had the, 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 the killings in, um, uh, in, in, in Manfe. We had the killings of the P, um, what happened recently in PSS uh, Mancon and in PCSS Bafut. We had so many deaths like uh, uh, um, the, 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 what happened in Maoto recently. All these things were supposed to be denounced, not today. We have lost a lot of youths. We have lost children. We have lost mothers. We have lost so many people. Of, Why is it of, now some that... Of, some of these killings you've articulated, especially in Mautu, are controversial because some will say uh, those who were killed um, were killed by men spotted in military gears and some were killed by men not spotted in military gears. Uh, does it mean that all of the killings are to be blamed on Ayabacho Lucas? Based on no, uh, Mr. Javis, you know, um, whether who kills or who doesn't kill. Because, you know, this government and the secessionists, they are trying to play a blame game. In the beginning, we do not know who kill. This one will kill so that they will accuse this person so that international opinions will pour a blame on a particular person. Now, we are on the fact that whosoever kills, it is not important because the life of everybody is important. Ayabacho was supposed to denounce this, being that it is the secessionists that kill or the military men that killed. He was supposed to denounce this, not today. We have lost a lot of people. But I tell you, it is, it is better late than never. Okay. It is very important. It, what he did, and I call the others to follow him and let us end this anglophone crisis. Thank okay. you. Um, joining us, Dewum Emmanuel, um, thanks for coming. Yes, uh, Tamai Javis, happy Sunday to all our viewers, happy Sunday to our group of panelists, and uh, happy Sunday to my twins back at home. I know they are always watching. I apologize for my late coming. You know, you the, are never late, so okay. yeah, yeah, it's even my audience, yes, you know, driving from airport to, to Bangay with the nature of routes, 
uh, that we all know is what uh, has kept me because people started calling long ago i just discovered down here so uh i apologize to the televiewers okay i think um let me get uh your own opinion on this um you listen to uh back when articulating that ayabacho's claim is seemingly political that this has act he should have denounced from genesis of the crisis um you follow the news when uh Cameron's Minister of Territory administration articulated that um you know we won the war uh, against uh, the known state armed groups uh that common government has won the war in all of these what do you make of the situation the cacophony is 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 is, is, is it a sign that truly Cameroon has won the war well I I'm in love with the word cacophony you know, it was in this same studio last Sunday that I said, Cameroon is not moving. Cameroon cannot move. And I gave my reason. Cameroon has a problem which is very deep. Because those who know nothing, I said practically nothing, are put to do everything for this country. Anatanganji. I'm tempted to believe that he's one. Uh, first and foremost, you know, when a minister is named in this country, we always like to profile their academic background. Since from the day that Mr. Atanganji was nominated, I've never heard anything. I've tried to find out. Even electronically, I've heard nothing about his academic profile or background. And that explains why Cameroon is... In fact, his outing comforts my words and my position on the fact that Cameroon cannot move with people know nothing, put a place to do almost everything for the country. You will understand that uh, Mr. Atanji is more of a catalyst and a, provocate, a provocator to this crisis. From the beginning, when he said, I said it yesterday, I'm saying it today. And I shall say it tomorrow. Cameroon has always honored Anglophones. Anglophones have a very high hand of support in this country from the head of state. But unfortunately, we are in a system where vices have become virtues. And those who practice vices every day are very sure of their positions in the government. So vices in this country have been transformed to virtues. That is why people like Atanji, that I myself, sometimes when I just get this name, Mr. Atanji, it's like gastritis is beginning to attack my lungs. Yeah, because, how, how, uh, no, no, listen, no, 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 no. because uh, any no, 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 no. any no, no, of no, his I'm outing, coming, I'm coming, I want to get, I want to get clarification. Yes. Um, uh, this, this is a, this is Camus, one of Camus' most active ministers, mm -hmm. who have been very, very um hard working yes. in terms of going to the north region of the country to to to, bury to, the to, to, yes, to yes. help those fighting against Boko Haram insurgency in the west region when the landslide occurred last year he was there in the west region he was there when the accident occurred early <laughs> December when uh, the accident occurred he was one of the few ministers to be on ground he has visited north and southwest region on numerous occasions he has been to the uh east region and to ensure that everything is moving on well and you say when you hear him talk is like gastritis. What yes, do you mean yes. by that? This is someone know, accredited minister. Accredited by who? By the state. And one of the most active workaholic ministers we have. Now, I, I give back this question to you, even though you are the one asking the question. If Atanganji was a credible minister, why can he not go down to Maitunquen alone and walk free as I'm walking? Will the people identify with him? No, let's, let's say these things the way they are. Let's be honest to ourselves. It is clear. I am telling you that Atanganji as a person, I don't have any problem with him. But Atanganji as a minister and his government, which this CBDM regime government is the highest curse that has ever happened to, to the Cameroonian people. You know, if, Cameruna, if the Cameroonian people were not very low abiding, very patient, very understanding, we would have had several wars, not just the southwest, northwest war that we are talking today. So we, Cameroon is in war. 
we should not only limit it to northwest, southwest, because I know what is making us to be so much akin to what is happening in northwest and southwest is because there's bloodshed every day. But I want to tell you that war is not only this bloodshed. War is in many forms. This is a minister whom I don't think he takes advice from his advisors because I believe every minister has an advisor, if I'm not wrong. I wonder at time whether his outings are ever or have ever been guided by some advisory uh, 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 administrator around him because he's a minister that jabbers. It is not talking. He's so flippant and he opens his mouth. He does not weigh the degree of the word that comes out of his no, mouth. No, but you can, you can, anything you he can, says. You can, you can, you can, you can, you can, you can attribute that the Minister of Territorial Administration, who speaks from evidence, from what the government, from what uh, the, 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 the intelligence uh, community of Cameroon <laughs> must have given him as someone who is flippant. Mr. Javis, you are a journalist. Try and extend your microphone to Atanganji. Ask him this mattresses the food you are carrying to Northwest. What is happening there that you are carrying these things? Which problem are you going to solve there? There was no problem there and there was no war. Which war has your master in a 2D won? And see if he will answer you. But I think uh, you and I. All of us need to be looking towards peace. And if we were to look towards peace, there's no gain saying that the government of Cameroon has failed 99% in everything. Because if I ask you just two examples, two areas in Cameroon that Cameroon has ever realized something 100%, just areas, be it in education, health, uh, agriculture, some of them even plant agricultural machineries to germinate like seeds somewhere in some part of the country. So you discover that in this country, nothing has ever been realized 100%. So the only thing I am I'm talking at the same time and give a way forward is that Cameroonians, you people have been sleeping for so long. You people are the ones babysitting. You people are the ones babysitting this government. And of course, the government has taken you people for granted, you are silenced for granted, and are smashing on you every day. Bia can never conquer the war. He will never win the war. I buy her idea in total. You don't win a war against your people. The only way out of this boire is that let genuine talks take place. Let truth be said and let reconciliation be done anything short of this create one million commissions send atanganji to northwest one million times those people that their wounds were already healed atanganji refreshes them every day and they go back to the start of the the, the problem so atanganji is like a refresher he refreshes the problem every day so he is the principal problem that camera is having at this moment. So you are buying to, yes. to um, Akwen's own own way that Atanganji is a flippant, uh, is um, a uh, problem that Cameroon has. But I, I, th I don't seem to agree with that uh, hypothesis. Uh, let me come to you, uh, Mr. <coughs> Ignacio Stebeck, briefly on this, so that we move to the second topic of the day, which is uh, concerning ID card and passport. When we, when we get the panelists all blaming Cameroon's Minister of Territory Administration, the workaholic minister uh, who institute uh, a lot of changes as far as Cameroon's intelligence is concerned as someone who needs advisor. Uh, can we say that, does it mean that the government is not getting the right information from the people? Uh, for the, if, if, for, no, I would like to comment uh, 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 instead. Because yes, this, this way, I, I would like us to understand that eh, there are things that do not move together. Peace does not go together with pride. No, peace does not go together with personal interest. Either you leave one of these and move with one. That's what I'm trying to, I'm trying to see. 
if you cannot leave pride aside and personal interest, you leave, don't talk about peace, allow the peace for others to, to, to talk about. I, I'm saying this one because normally it, 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 at, at the level of the government, you see responsible authorities, when you hear them speak, you feel that this thing can go to the end. There are some people that are admire. The Prime Minister, as our sister said from here, I've noticed that most of his outing, when he's talking to the camera, he has been repeating the word yeah. forgiveness several times. I followed him very well. I also followed uh, the former Prime Minister. Jan Philemon. Jan Philemon. It is difficult to hear him use raw words, terrorists, uh, 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 cats like other people. You, so they, they have been using uh, uh, soft words. Somebody I followed ever since when the war started was the governor of Norway's uh, region. I love uh, the Africa. Africa. Javis, I realized something. For my first time, I realized that there's a crisis in a town. But there's one authority who, whom the, the, the protester, when they see him, they allow him pass. In 2017, when uh, the, 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 the convoy of uh, Minister Tanganji was attacked, I was in the mind that I even tried to talk to some people. They, just, they considered uh, the uh, governor uh, uh, really as, a, as a peaceful person. His convoy was going around the town until when people realized that he was. He, he started playing a game. He can come like that and enter into a bar and with some of his collaborators and they ordered beer and they were drinking. He took the images and was sending to Yaoundé that uh, things are already moving. That's when people do, started refusing him from visiting business places. But why, why, I'm quoting this one because when these uh, intelligent ministers, whom from their behavior you know how uh, educated they are, when they when, when they do this and then some of them will come and and then a. Uh, destroy everything with their words and uh, it, that attitude Jarvis I want to see it like uh, I, 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 I'm trying to suspect these two groups that are, that are collaborating because at any time things are trying to cool down oh, permit me permit me let me quote this thing if they are not realizing some few people will realize if you have been watching the Nigeria movies there's a popular name they will call uh, Endoka this is somebody when so he, <laughs> yes this is somebody when you see the part that he played it is somebody you will notice that if he has once had a problem with the 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 the, the, the phone of the village <laughs> it may be many years ago and the phone has even forgot that I, I, I had a problem with this man then when it comes to, to a situation where the phone is in the in the course of terrorizing the the the, the his subjects indoka will he would just go take the side of the phone and begin to support him in everything, trying to frustrate you, but it's, he is on revenge. You, the person he is doing that, the phone will never realize that this man is here to deceive me. That is the type of game I'm trying to see. Okay. Our, yeah, yes, our minister uh, t t t t t trying to play here. Okay. So those who are concerned, it is better they should be wise. Because really, this I can, I, I've never seen a type of crisis which... People have given proposal. Even a fool who is on the street has given a good proposal. But, 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 yeah. but, but uh, anyway, let me come. I will come back to you. I want yes. to again. Uh, the, the conversation has, been mo has moved more to Atanganji than not looking at Ayabacho and Ebenezer Akanga and Co. Good afternoon, Javis and all panelists in the studio. Good afternoon, our faithful viewers. Let it be known to this. Let it be known. The secessionist leaders, let it be known to the, to the secessionist leaders that they have failed woefully and have lost the world. It does not mean the government is right, but it has won. It is high time the call of hostilities against the government so as to put an end to wanton extermination of our youth as we see every day is coming from an anonymous sender. This around we say I love the lady on the program. She is speaking the bitter truth. May God bless she's speaking the bitter truth. May God bless her effort. Patience from Yaoundé. Uh, this other one reads, it says, uh, Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Madrito. I don't know if you are moderating the program or you are defending the government. Alfred from Bamenda. <laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, hello. Hello, my favorite TV show. I want to contribute something concerning the program. Uh, your, concerning the programs you host and the one today. The journalists who are uh, opportune to host programs should always invite... Uh, invite to show allow invitees to express themselves to their last point instead of um hiding their ideas uh, div diverting them from the program from the original thought <laughs> uh 
Uh, nobody's deviating anybody from the original thought. We just want to ensure that uh, we they, they, they get the, the opportunity to express their mind detailly mm -hmm. for the common man to understand. Uh, but Aquen, um, Ayabacho Lucas is blaming these fighters. And Atanganyi is saying that we have won the war. If we look at 2018, 2019, the peak of the crisis, we are moving down slope in terms of uh, the, the rigorous gunshots we have. Um, is it not time for us to say uh, maybe we took this thing from a different perspective? Let's look at it now from another perspective. Oh, well, Mr. Javis, um, it is not or is only... Or is Lucas afraid of ICC or International Tribunal? That's why he's coming out to clear his image. Well, uh, Mr. Javis, it is not really that Ayabachu is afraid. I told you it's a political game they are playing. You will notice that it is not only Ayabachu that made an outing, because I just read yes, on National Telegram. Yes, we also have Eric Tata. And that Eric Tata yes, yes, Eric Tata went out um, on National Telegram. I think that was yesterday. And when I read his he, what he wrote, I noticed that he too blamed the secessionist. He too had the same idea with Ayabacho. It means that um, the leaders of these separatist fighters are gradually coming out to reality. So they are rebranding their strategy? Sure, they are trying to, you know, they are coming out. We, we, we do not know their push factor. That's the truth. We do not know on what they are counting on to be able to make this statement. But what we are interested on is what they say. Because Cameroonians have really suffered and we have lost about... 25,000 people in this anglophone crisis and many people have been displaced. So many families have been disorganized and it has greatly affected the economy of Cameroon. So it is time that all Cameroonians, those that are leading this battle, should rebrand. Because you, when I read, when I read... The figures puts the death toll at 3,000 plus. I read that is the, the st we, we, we can just you know come out with everybody can have his own statistics we cannot be sure because there are people who die we do not find their bodies and they are not counted amongst those who, those who died and those who are missing too so um, I will tell you that it's not only Ayabacho and Ebenezer Kangwa we also had Eric Tato who um, came out yesterday and spoke of the visit of um, Cameroon Secretary of State Ferdinand Gongo who is recently in Bamenda to take part in um, a meeting with um, uh, the uh, the the secretary of state of um of um cardinal of the cardinal to me of um the, the, the of the Pat francois of, 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 um, vatican of, yes of vatican Pat francois he was received too by john gute and the president so i think that um the, uh, the the catholic church too has found interest in this war and i think that we all these bodies we are going to find solutions to better quench these problems and i think that ayabacho and ebeneze should not only um rebrand these things but they should come out to a roundtable discussion they should bring out ideas like the roundtable discussion but the problem is will the government accept this roundtable discussion will they organize another um, inclusive dialogue which is being solicited by so many cameroonians because i tell you mr javis carrying guns knives and all other equipment do not solve a problem because you will accept with me that at the end of every war in every country, we always come out with a roundtable discussion that brings out solutions. So I want to call on all the other um, separatist leaders to join hands with Ayabacho, Ebenezer Kangwa, and Eric Tota to look on their own perspectives, to rebrand because naturally they have, um, I cannot say they have failed. They have, um, you know, they have put emotions in this. Because what do you mean that? What do you mean that you cannot say they are failed? Well, we I cannot. I cannot. I cannot term they are in place. Uh, thousands, thousands of people have been killed. Hundreds of schools have been burnt down. A lot of students are out of school. We have a lot of villages uh, out of are, are, are Mr. Mr. Javis, you are telling us that it's been successful, uh, meaning that the numerous and wanton killings we have is a success to this uh, kind of war that many will say shameless war and warless war. Mr. Javis, um, I cannot uh, say it on uh, on a TV station that the separatist fighters and the ideas they had previously has failed. I can only say they are casting. When I talk of casting, it means the way they carried out what they were demanding from the government was a wrong strategy. Okay. But I cannot say they have failed. So I think that they are trying to rebrand their demands, which is like avoiding the killings, avoiding children from not going to school, like they will permit children 
going to school now they will allow our parents our mothers to stay in peace and they will go out for an inclusive dialogue that is what i mean okay. i do not clap for the fact that people died people have died we have lost so many people and i have lost members of my families it means that their strategy or their casting was wrong okay so they should rebrand coming back to you but, okay. Um, the woman Manuel briefly so that we can move to the next topic mm -hmm. of the day, which is ID card and passport issue. But let's run up with this first part of it. Uh, before then, I love the analysis of your guests, especially the lady and the guy who came. You are doing a great job. It's innocent Barozi photo from Ponaberry Duwala. Uh, this one read it says, uh, Minister Atananji is. <laughs> <laughs> Please, while well, you are sending us your message, uh, the we Republic can, <laughs> so that uh, we can actually read your message well. Uh, you know, uh, whether we like it or not, these are brothers, sisters, and fathers of loved ones, and we do not want our own loved ones to be called names, uh, especially when these matters are concerned. Hi, my name is Chofo from Bamenda. I love the program. Uh, this other one read, it says, um, Good afternoon to you all in the studio. Nice program. I think that you people should continue to invite uh, government ministers to this program. Congratulations to House of Commons. We need more women to stand and to stand, feel the pain of the common man. God bless you. This one really says, um, I am shame at the utterances of the <laughs> of the pres of the presenter. <laughs> Well, you have a right to your opinion. Hello, good afternoon. It's coming from an anonymous sender. Uh, do you remember briefly? I have a John Lucas, uh, Eric Tato as Bar Pussit, and Ebeniza Kanga, and we've had others uh, who have been saying that um, the separatist fighters have been committing act, a crime against humanity. And can we not just say that it's because of Mr. Portanganji's outing that they are afraid that um, they will be called to justice? Or maybe there's something that's cooking that they have seen that uh, tribunals will be coming up shortly and people will be held accountable. So they are struggling to do a public relation campaign as far as this is concerned. Well, it could be yes and it could be no, depending on how you look at it. You know, like uh, she said there, it's all, I buy the, the idea, all of them. It's, it's all political. I know in politics, he who wins is he who succeeds to convince the person who has the hammer to lay it on him. So to me, you see, look at these people called Ayabacho, Lucas, Mark Barretta. At times you see them in the swimming pools with their children. Please, I, 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 I find it even heavy to have a comment about Ayabacho. But I think when they want to stop a war, they stop counting corpses. If Ayabacho was speaking from the genuine part of his heart, I will applaud it. But since I'm not Jesus Christ and I cannot read his mind, and I know that he's a warmonger, because somebody I've been following on Facebook for a very long time. And never a day has he ever believed that this war shall come to the end. I said yes or no, depending on where you are standing. When you look at it now, it could be that something transpired between Ayabacho and his fighters on the field. And uh, there is this, they have lost touch of confidence with each other. And because of this lack of confidence, he is now angry. Because what I would have expected from him was to come out clear and say that if he was genuine, now I come out to say he is not genuine. If he was genuine, he would have met a call clear. My people who were in the bushes with guns, down your guns. It is time to speak. It is time to talk. But condemnations, like I've always told you people, UN will condemn. Even though I don't believe in the UN, you know my stand on all these international organizations. There are worse than Jangi houses, even in our villages here. Condemnations will come from Ayabacho. Condemnations will come from Atananji. And I come back to what my senior uh, panelist said here that it's like there's a game. 
that into uh, an agreement, an agreement of provocation. This one provokes, he stinks, and then steps backward, then gives room to another tragedy to take place. Then they come out and <laughs> connect. That is where we find, that's the scenario in which we find ourselves. And I think Ayabacho and the so-called Tato who blocked me even. I think Tato has never been genuine in anything he says. He is uncooked in everything he does in his life. So it is not genuine. Okay. Um, briefly on this, uh, what's the way out of this cacophony that we have? Out of the crisis as a whole. Really now? I, I propose it once. Not just, uh, I'm just looking at the, 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 the strategy of communication that we have. This person, you said there is, you said there's a, a collabo. You see like a kind of collabo between that they, they are collaborating. Uh, what's the way out? The way out of this is that the cacophony that is going on, they do not feel it. If they are tired, they should step down and I'm um, instead calling on the citizens to, to, to rise and chase all these uh, the, 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 the two groups away and, and, and then liberate the, 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 the country from all, all, all this mess. Because really, I, I was, that's what I tried to say before that, which type of crisis that you see, even a fool on the street has proposed a good solution to it. Up to this level, nothing has been applied. Okay. It has changed from crisis to, to war. So these people, they should tell us whether they are, so, they, they are ready to solve the war or not. I'm talking about the government and the separatists. Okay. If they cannot, then they should give away. <coughs> if they cannot give away, the population will rise against and chase all of them away and liberate the, the, the themselves. But when, where do we go from here? Well, well, Mr. Jarvis, as I previously said, that this is a political game between the both parties. You know, I think that politically they talk and understand themselves. That is why I previously said that I do not believe 100% to what Ayabacho and Eric Tato and um, Ebenezer Kangwa said. I do not believe in what they say if they really meant what they said. But what I think the way out is for the population themselves to rise up and become intelligent notice that these guys are playing over our intelligence the both parties are Tananji and uh, um ayabacho okay so they should denounce them because only the population can liberate themselves okay. actually that's the truth um do you believe in minister paul Tananji was the way out of this because we see that hostility has reduced a lot of things have reduced as far as is concerned though the crisis is still ongoing mr, but, mr. Jarvis, but, hostilities have not reduced it's all about the strategy. You know, in war, there are different strategies. Let, let, let me quickly say something. You know, when Atanganji went out, I don't know whether it was on the 23rd, but I want to remind you that in my place of origin, Fundong, there was terrible shooting on the 21st. I don't want to tell you what happened with one really police really and really a gentleman. Just, just so which means that nothing has changed. Out. It's only a change of strategy to hit, run, and then uh, extend it. Okay. The way out, I have maintained it that this government has to climb down the high horses, ask for apology from the Cameroonians, come for genuine dialogue and the true reconciliation. Okay. As simple as that. Thank you very much. Uh, we will take on this brief transition. When we come back, we are going to the second topic, which is ID card passport saga, the silence of opposition parties. We will be coming back after this.